What's up everybody, I'm Finn McKenty. This is my second channel and this is your home for my Twitch highlights and my podcast. So if you like this and you wanna see more of that and you wanna join the live streams, there's a link to that in the description of this video. And with that out of the way, let's pretend that you were standing around uh, at the mall or you know, wherever the kids hang out these days and somebody approached you, just came up to you out of the blue and said, hey, you look like the kind of person that would know about pop punk. I would like to know about pop punk. Where do I start? Wouldn't you like to be able to just hand them a starter kit and say, I'm glad you asked. And fortunately for you, I have a great answer. Here it is. Well, as far as I'm aware, such a thing doesn't exist, but wouldn't it be great if you had a pop punk starter kit today? That is what we're gonna make. We are going to make a pop punk starter kit. I would start at the very beginning, right? You know, one of the first bands to combine, you know, punk and pop in a deliberate way. I would probably start here with the Ramones. And my personal favorite Ramones song is I Want to Be Sedated. Can kids now relate to this? I don't know. I mean, the kids hanging out, vaping in Ubers, watching TikTok and their iPhone 13. Can the kids relate to the Ramones? I don't know. Probably not. But it's a great song. That's true. They might relate to this song, you know, because all these Zoomer songs now are about being on antidepressants and stuff like that. So maybe they would relate to I want to be sedated conceptually. I don't know. Or maybe they would go, oh, the the T-shirt brand, like they have music that the, my, my mom has a ton of Ramones T-shirts. That's her favorite brand. I didn't know they made music. <laughs> So that's probably where I would start personally, you know, just to say, hey, look, here's some old stuff, some old fart music, old fart pop punk. You might like it. You might not like it, but either way, you should know about it. Another old fart band is Descendants, probably my favorite, like older pop punk band of all time. I think this is my favorite Descendants song, Coolidge. I remember hearing this on some skate video in like 1991, I think. The unfortunate thing about the Descendants is that they also invented a lot of these sort of incel nice guy kind of tropes that made their way into uh, pop punk later on. This is one of the really unfortunate songs in their catalog. The creepy guy standing in the corner. He's like the, uh, I wish I was at home, you know, the guy at the party meme. I wish I was at home listening to Descendants kind of meme. I've never seen you before. I was wondering, you know, if you like, you know. Stalker core, that's right. Descendants is nice guy vibes. Why don't you split the squares and love me instead? Why do you like all those assholes instead of a nice guy like me? You bitch. <laughs> Very unfortunate. Um, that's right. Descendants gave birth to 2002 pop punk song craft in 1987. They did. I love the band, but gotta say, a lot of the lyrics maybe didn't age so well. Another band that would be in the pop punk starter kit, but let's just say their lyrics maybe didn't age so well, is Screeching Weasel, such as this song, I Want to Be a Homosexual. The difference is that unlike Descendants, uh, Screeching Weasel are terrible. Really just bad music. I mean, listen to this. Like, they sound like eighth graders who can barely play. It's rough stuff. Yeah, what a blistering, ripping solo. Just absolute virtuoso shredding. It's almost unlistenable, right? I think I would put it in the starter kit just because, you know, it's got to go in there. But uh, the band is terrible. And uh, Ben Weasel is a terrible person. Here's a video of him punching two women. Not one, but two. There's number one. Boom. Then this woman comes up behind him. He punches her too. <laughs> punches two women on stage. And by the way, look at this. This dude sucker punches this woman, sucker punches her, punches her twice. 
Doesn't even knock her down. What a pussy. He gets two free shots on her. And she she's not even rocked. So, uh, yeah. Not a fan of Screeching Weasel. Terrible music. Terrible human. But I would still put it in the starter pack just for, you know, historical significance. Just so that people are aware. Just so they know. Next sort of uh, bucket on the list would be the skate punk era. No effects, definitely the flagship band of the skate punk era. The definitive band of the 90s skate punk era. You know, they don't like being called pop punk, I don't think, but pretty much what they were. At least that's uh, how we thought of it at the time, that they weren't, you know, real punk. And you know, in hindsight, it's pretty obvious to me why they were more popular than all these other bands is because they were a lot better. Mike is very funny and charismatic. These are great songs. They could actually play their instruments. And the reason why is because they were all very influenced by RKL, who are great musicians. So no surprise. Lagwagon, I would say, is one of the other really great bands of this era. You don't hear their name come up very often these days. But really great band. Mike was cool when I was on his podcast. He was super friendly. I had a lot of fun on it. I really like this guy's voice. I forget his name, but I really like his name, his voice. You don't hear their name come up very often anymore, which I think is a shame. Because Lagwagon is very underrated. But it's also obvious to me why this stuff didn't get as big as Green Day or The Offspring or Blink. Because, I mean, with all due respect to them, it's just not as good as those bands, right? Solid, but it's good, but it's not great. I would also put MXPX under this bucket of skate punk, although they're a Christian band. So they were considered false punk in the scene at the time. If you liked MXPX, you were uh, no other way to look at it. You were a poser, period, end of story. And I've always liked MXPX. I think they're a great band. But back in the day, if you liked MXPX, you were a poser, period, no ifs, ands, or buts. Um, and it's also obvious to me why MXPX ended up getting bigger than any other skate punk band of that era because these songs are just straight up better. Way better. And they seem like really nice, likable guys too. This is a great song. And a great video. Yeah, the B and the C tier bands in the style are absolutely unlistenable. It's true. Anything less than the best is unlistenable. You wouldn't do that in church, would, would you? I was told that MXPX were nice Christian boys. I don't need belching and burping in my household. I don't need, need you encouraging my son to uh, engage in those kind of rude behaviors at the dinner table. Thank you very much. Are these comedy bands, in a manner of speaking? MXPX is sort of the beginning of when I think that this older pop punk starts to hold up to modern ears. You know, this is clearly like an older style, but this is when it starts actually sounding good. All that stuff from the 80s and 90s, you know, unless you want to listen to, you know, basically oldies, <laughs> that stuff to modern ears does not sound good. The production is bad. Uh, the songs are, you know, oftentimes like a little rough around the edges, but MXPX is sort of where it starts to sound pretty good. Uh, Life in General is a good, a good album for sure. And that brings us to the next big era. But before I go any further, I wanted to tell you about a very cool project that's going on in Kickstarter right now. It's called Mongolian Spirit, and it's a feature length documentary following the new ambassadors of Mongolian music and art who are breathing new life into a rich culture that's been around for thousands of years. In particular, the documentary takes a deep dive into a genre of music that's kind kind of blown up in the past couple years, which is Mongolian folk rock or metal. You've probably heard of bands like The Who. There's also pioneers of the genre from Inner Mongolia, like Ego Fall, and bands that followed in their footsteps like Sold, who are blending these traditional Mongolian instruments and sounds with more like modern Western music. Inner Mongolia has over 5 million Mongolian residents, but the old traditional nomadic ways of life are quickly disappearing from that society. But these musicians and artists are 
are using their talents to modernize this ancient culture and make it more accessible to the rest of the world. They're raising funds for this on Kickstarter right now. So if you want to check this out and support what they're doing, which I think you should, check it out at the link in the description of this video. And that brings us to the next big era, which was the TRL core era. And I say that because, of course, as we all know, TRL was the most important show on MTV at that time. That was their daily show, Total Request Live, where they would come on and play, what was it, the top 10 or 20 videos or whatever, every afternoon after school. And that was sort of the place where teenagers would come home and discover new music, find out what was cool, blah, blah, blah. And that is when pop punk really exploded when it got plugged into the TRL thing. I made a whole video about this, but there's a handful of bands there that I think have to be mentioned. Of course, we all know these, but we got to mention Blink-182. Uh, and my, maybe my favorite, the, the song that made me really fall in love with Blink-182 was Josie. It was never on TRL. This is before they got that big, but this is great stuff. This is like a better version of the Descendants. Like the Descendants, if they could actually play and like were more charismatic and not so much uh, nice guys. My I mean, it's, it's pretty much like a 2000s high school movie, right? The video is perfect. The band got a lot better when Travis joined, of course, because Scott Rayner is a terrible drummer. But if you want to start at the beginning of TRL Core, you know, maybe start here. You can't go wrong. Next, of course, we have Newfound Glory. Again, I think pretty much everything they've done is solid, but maybe you want to start here with Dress to Kill. I want to say this was like their first song on a major label, I think. They went from, you know, being a South Florida sort of hardcore adjacent band to being, you know, major label pop punk. This is when they really broke through. And I don't know how, but somehow or another, they got Rachel Lee Cook to be in this video, who was like the ultimate you know, babe of this era. <clears throat> How do they get Rachel Lee Cook? I don't know. Mega babe. Kill, Look at this, like, I mean, I feel like this is a screenshot of my life in 1999. An image of Rachel Lee Cook slowly downloading on dial-up internet. This was my life in 1999. I still love this album. And look at the shorts. I mean, I could go on forever about this. Everything about this album and this video is great. 10 out of 10, total slice of life flashback for me. Love this shit. The other band we have to talk about here in this era, you'd be missing out if you didn't have them in your pop punk starter pack, which is Good Charlotte, The Anthem. These songs hold up, great shit. The drip, look at this, the lowrider bikes. The, uh, the bandanas, the maid shirt uh in the real version of this he's wearing a vietnam shirt the hardcore band uh i don't know why they blurred it out in the video but that's what he's wearing <clears throat> take me back everything about this is great but yes good charlotte is absolutely at the time considered a poser band if you like good charlotte you were not cool period end of story in the eyes of the quote-unquote real punks of course i thought good charlotte was great although you know even at the time i thought they were a little bit corny but even i had to admit they had some great songs right if you can't get into these songs i don't know what to tell you there's something wrong with you if you don't like this song great choruses they knew how to write a fucking song that's for sure and of course Sum 41, we all know Sum 41, right? Fat Lip is maybe my favorite song, but in terms of like a classic pop punk song, I think maybe In Too Deep, maybe this might be the better song to choose. Great video too. The evil chads competing and swimming against the evil chads. What a chorus. I like that. This I like. I like this move here. See, oh, I paused it on just the right frame. Insinuating that the chads might be gay. Well, look, if grabbing this guy's ass makes me gay, then all right, I guess I'm gay. Cause I would grab that man's ass too if it was in front of me. Just 
begging that little apple bottom there just beg how could you not i would do it too and an empty pool video that's right you can't go wrong with an empty pool video can you very sportsmanlike butt pad i agree that's sort of the highlights of the TRL core era, which brings us to the next era, the Sad Boy era. Sad Boy pop punk era, which is when the uh, Tumblr band sort of started to bring in the influences of hardcore and shoegaze and stuff like that. The definitive band there for sure is the story so far. I still think this is their best song. <laughs> 10 out of 10 song. You guys only like stuff that came out when you were in high school. I get it. Great album, still totally holds up. Can't go wrong with the story so far. The uh, other big bands of this era be Real Friends, which might be, might be my favorite band of this era, actually. I really love this song in this video. I mean, this is like the perfect snapshot of 2013 Tumblr, pop punk, you know, the pizza and khakis era. When everyone was all about Warp Tour, this is like peak Warp Tour. I was obviously a lot older than all the people in the video when this came out, but still, even for me, it felt cool. Like I was more of an observer than a participant, obviously me not being in high school then, but absolutely love this, like great song, perfect video too. What a video. The pizza era of pop punk, untouchable. This shit was the best. One of my very favorite eras of music. Sleepy eyes and bony knees. I actually have a lot of memories from this era too. I hung out with the guys from City Lights a lot around this era from like, you know, 2010 to 2013 or so when I lived in Columbus. Fun times. State champs, I would say is uh, maybe the other sort of most notable band of this era. Band that's still relevant. This was their big song. They came out earlier in this, but this was their big song. Not really a sad boy band, but kind of like sad boy adjacent. They've always been a little bit more upbeat. Hard to believe that this is seven years old, isn't it? Yes, I would consider Easy Core part of pop punk, but we're running out of time, so I'm not gonna include that. I always thought it sounded like he was saying Matt Damon here. I still don't know. I always mean to look up the lyrics because it sounds like he's saying Matt Damon. Uh, I don't think he is, but sounds like it to me. So I just sing along. When this is playing, I just say Matt Damon. This is a great chorus. So that was sort of the um, the end of the Tumblr sad boy pop punk era, you know, 2015 or so, kind of the tail end of that, which brings us to the modern era, which, uh, you know, I would call like TikTok, Instagram pop punk. Now, there's a ton of bands in this sort of generation that I could name, but a couple come to mind. Stand Atlantic, I would say, is one of the standouts of this era. No pun intended. I like this band quite a bit. Really great vocalist. Isn't that the, some funky bass there? This band's from Australia. Always a little bit tougher to break through in America as an Australian band, as a foreign band in general. And of course, we gotta talk about all the um, quote unquote emo rappers turned pop punk. Uh, I know my audience really likes uh, Lil Lotus and so do I. Big fan. For example, his new song, Girl Next Door featuring Lil Aaron, could have come out in 2002, right? Sounds straight out of 2002. And we could put MGK in here, but I don't know. Do you really want me to put MGK in here? I don't think you do. You're gonna make a broad 101 video of a large genre without listing every C tier band I liked in high school. I'm so sorry. I know that's what you people want. You want this to be three hours long, mentioning every possible band, but I can't do it. Kissing the homies, it's a very important part. Kissing the homies, where's the homie kissing? Here it is, here it comes, the most important part.
there we have it all right well that brings us up to the modern era of pop punk uh and i am out of time i could list a million bands here but i'm out of time hopefully that gives you an idea of where to start so next time somebody comes up to you because i know this happens to you all the time next time somebody comes up to you and says hey i would like to get into pop punk you look like the kind of person that could help me do that where should i start you'll say well congratulations thank you for asking it's your lucky day i have just the right thing for you and then you will hand them this video here it is tailor-made for you your personal pop punk starter kit there it is